In the previous videos about clean flight flight controllers, I gave you a whole bunch of information that you could use to decide between them uh, for yourself. And now I'm going to be a little more subjective and I'm just going to tell you how I think they stack up against each other. And I am going to tell you what I think the best one is. I'm going to do a real BuzzFeedy thing, you know, number one, number two, number three flight controller on the market today. Uh, I understand that other people have other opinions and they're completely valid, but these are my opinions. Okay, so let's start by just sort of running them, doing some matchups and seeing who comes out ahead in different matchups. First of all, the Singularity F3 with the built-in video transmitter. If you want a, a built-in video transmitter, then you should buy the Singularity F3. And if you don't want the built-in video transmitter, I think it's really expensive. Uh, buying it's a hundred bucks buying spares is going to kill you and um uh yeah I, I just i don't so if you want that feature buy it and if you don't want that feature i don't think you should buy it you know if you want 128 mega data flash the x-racer f303 has that uh if you want an onboard regulator uh, lots of others have that but basically the one thing that singularity really brings to the table is the integrated video transmitter other than that it's just super expensive flight controller and uh, so fine. So we'll just leave that one alone from now on. The CC3D. I talked about all the reasons why I think the CC3D is problematic in the F1 video. Either you agree with me or you don't, but I'm going to knock that one out as well. Alrighty. The Naze 32 and the Rev, uh, the Naze 32 Rev 6 and the Lux use the 6500 gyro, which we talked about having a worse noise spec than the 6050 or the 6000. And I questioned in my video whether that uh, really affects performance or whether it's just a number on a data sheet that we don't have to think about. And since then, more than one person has come to me in, on my YouTube video com comments and in private and other, other channels and told me that they've had trouble tuning uh, boards with the 6500 on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that the 6500 may have issues uh, with flight performance, they just weren't able to tune them as good as boards with the 6050 or presumably the 6000, which has the same rating. Okay, so that's that's an issue that is common to the Lux and the Nase 32 Rev 6 that sort of makes me tend to lean away from them. The CC3D, the Lux, and the Cyclone all have the virtual COM port situation. Now let me tell you, I, I spoke about this with a little bit of inaccuracy in my previous video, and I'm going to try and clear it up now and get it correct. So there's a chip called the CP210, and a CP210 basically is what makes your computer think that there is a USB device on the other end of the line. When there is a CP210 on board, and then your microprocessor re re resets or power cycles, the CP210 maintains the, the presence of the USB COM port so that it, the, the machine doesn't think it goes anywhere. The, the Cyclone, the uh, Lux, and the CC3D do not have the CP210. They do the thing called the Virtual COM port, or VCP. Virtual COM port means that the microprocessor itself acts as the USB interface and tells Windows, yes, there's a USB COM port here. And what that means is that when the board power cycles or resets for any reason, Windows perceives, or, or, or Linux or Mac OS, perceives that the COM port has gone away. And then you get a doo doop, disconnect, doo doop, reconnect. Now, in some cases, all that means is that it takes a little bit longer for your board to come back after you do a, a save your configuration. But in other cases, I've heard of people with Windows machines having problems where it doesn't come back until they power cycle it. The other thing that the virtual COM port means is that you can't do BL Heli pass through through your USB port. Uh, it is tied to one of the UARTs and you need to hook up a CP210 adapter to the UART in order to do BL Heli pass through, which is kind of annoying. I mean, on, well, it's got a good and a bad. On the good side, you can do BL Heli pass through and the configurator at the same time without them conflicting. That's kind of nice, I guess. But how often do you really want to do that? I mean, e either you're configuring your ESCs or you're configuring your flight controller, right? Most of the time. So it's kind of annoying to have to have this third-party adapter that you have to plug in. And if you don't have a, co a convenient plug for your UART, you have to wire up maybe a pigtail or I don't know. I think the USB port way is the better way to do it. 
So as of right now, what that means is that the Lux, the Cyclone, and CC3D, which is an F1 board, not an F3 board, that they all use the virtual COM port, they don't have the CP210 adapter, and they cannot do BLLA pass-through through the USB port. However, I have been told by someone who is working on that problem that they are working on it very hard, it is very high priority, and they expect it to be solved soon. So if that pans out, then this objection will go away. The VCP objection where the board has to lose the COM port and re reestablish the COM port as a device every time it, it reboots, that will stay. But the ability to do BLHUD pass-through, which arguably is like the big thing, will potentially uh, become available. Okay, fine. What if you care about data flash? You like to do black box logging to an onboard data flash chip. Well, the board that stands out here is definitely the X-Racer F303 with 128 meg of data flash. Uh, the next highest boards are the massive Acro, which is uh, an F1 board, and the SP Racing F3, which is an F3 board at 64 meg. Um, the one thing that ticks against the F303 is that it doesn't have a VBAT pin, so it can't do voltage monitoring unless you solder directly to the pin on the microcontroller, which most people aren't going to do. But I think if data flash is your, is your big concern, then the X-Racer F303 is probably the winner. If you have an OS Doge or something else that stacks on top of a NAS, then the boards that are NAS compatible are the NAS32 Rev5, the NAS32 Rev6, and the Massive Acro. Massive Acro really seems like the winner between these three. It's a little bit more expensive than the other two, uh, but it has data flash on board, it has an onboard voltage regulator, it has a pretty good uh, RC, pretty good board layout and pin layout. You know, it really seems like if you're willing to spend 26 bucks, uh, that's the one to get. And if you're willing, if you're limited to like 17 to 20 bucks, then the NAS32 Rev5. But of these three, the NAS32 Rev6 doesn't seem like it has a really clear position. I mean, it has a worse, it has a worse gyro. It's just as expensive as the Massive Acro. It has less data flash, and it doesn't have an onboard voltage regulator. So between those, between those three, it seems like either the Massive Acro or the NACE32 Rev5 is the winner. Obviously, if lowest price is your goal, the NACE32 Rev5 is the way to go. You can get them for, I've seen them as low as like 15 bucks in some places, uh, usually more like 17 or 18 bucks. For a little bit more money, you can get the Dragonfly 32, which is almost identical in terms of features, but has a little bit better board layout. And by the way, with the Dragonfly 32, you're supporting Multirotor Mania. I have no affiliation with them, but I have done business with them as a customer. I've had good customer service from them when I had a small issue. Uh, their selection seems good. Their prices seem good. Uh, I think they're a vendor that's worth your support. I feel like the SP Racing is not very compelling in this lineup. Uh, first of all, it's very expensive compared to everything else on here. Now, granted, you and I both know you can go buy a clone, uh, a Chinese clone, and it'll be cheaper. It'll be more like in the range of 30 bucks. But even if you take price out of the equation by buying a clone, and by the way, donate to Hydra. Although I, I am kind of dogging on this, I'm not a big fan of this board. I feel bad about it. I know, I know what it feels like to develop a project, a product, put it on the market and have it not succeed that, that hurts and it costs money and it's bad and hydra deserves our support so go donate to hydra right now just go go to your clean flight configurator click on the donate button and send him some money he deserves it okay he does a lot for us okay fine uh, even if you take price out of the equation i feel like the sp racing f3 is even at like 30 bucks is not super compelling um the tornado and the f303 both sort of fall into that price range and it seems like if we compare them to the SP Racing F3, uh, the Tornado doesn't have any data flash, which some people care about that, some people don't. It has the piggyback voltage regulator, and I think it has a better better layout of the pins in the ability to use through hole however you want, as opposed to some of them are micro JST and some of them aren't. And then the X Racer F303 has way more data flash, you know, so I feel like it's uh, not super compelling. Uh, there uh, at 65 bucks for sure and even at 30 bucks i don't think it's like a clear winner what if you want to do 8 kilohertz gyro sync or 4 kilohertz gyro sync what if that's the thing you care the most about well i think we can eliminate the 6500 boards altogether because i i don't like the fact that they have a worse noise spec so although they can do 
uh, 8 kilohertz gyro sync, I wouldn't choose one of them. So what then boards have 6,000, have the 6,000 gyro, and that's the Cyclone and the Dodo. And between those two, the Cyclone currently has the virtual COM port, which has the issues we talked about, which would lead me away from it. The Dodo doesn't have those problems. It's also got 16 meg data flash. They both have an onboard voltage regulator. But the Dodo is 50 bucks and the Cyclone has been tentatively not officially priced at around 35 bucks. So I think you got to ask yourself whether you'd rather have a board that may not be able to do BL Heli pass through very conveniently for 35 bucks or a board you'd rather spend 50 bucks for a board that can do BL Heli pass through more easily and has a little bit of data flash. I think that's how it falls out. All right. So uh, let me just let me just break this all down then how I if I had to pick one as the best and the winner. First, we're going to get rid of the singularity because the singularity, if you want the video transmitter, you're going to pick it. If you don't want it, you're not going to pick it. Fine, gone. We're going to get rid of the CC3D for all the reasons I talked about. We're going to get rid of any board that has a 6500 gyro because I don't like the fact that it has a worse noise spec and I think that might have flight performance. And then we're going to get rid of any board that has a virtual COM port because currently, and this may change in the future, but right now, they don't do BL Heli pass through via the USB port. So what does that leave? It leaves us with the NACE 32 Rev 5, the Dragonfly 32, the Massive Acro, the SP Racing, the Dodo, and the X Racer F303. Of these, I feel like the X Racer F303 is the best. It is very price competitive at $27. So it's it's frankly competitive with the massive Acro, which is $26 for an F1 board. Has more flash memory than the massive Acro, but it does not have the built-in voltage regulator. Hmm. So that might be a $5 piece, perhaps if you were to get a Pololu for $5 or $7. And it also doesn't have the VBAT pin, which is a real... It's really too bad. If it had the VBAT pin, I really wouldn't even hesitate to call it my number one choice. The lack of a VBAT pin means that you're not going to get voltage monitoring. It doesn't matter so much today if you have an OSD. There's some talk of some features where the, the PIDs might get modified as your battery gets lower so that your response gets sharper as your battery gets weaker and to counteract that effect. If you didn't have a VBAT pin, that wouldn't work. So, but... All in all, that's like the only bad thing I have to say about the X-Racer F303 is that it lacks a VBAT pin. It's a shame, but I don't think that takes it out of my number one spot. My number two spot, I think, is the Dodo. The Dodo has everything going for it. it by the way, neither of these boards do 8 kilohertz gyro sync, but I just don't think that is super critical today unless you just really feel like being on the cutting edge and knowing what that feels like, Okay. Uh, so, so you'll notice that none of the boards that are actually on my list have the MPU 6000 and can do 8 kilohertz gyro sync. And it's, that reflects that. Uh, that's just not that high a priority to me. Um, the Dota doesn't have a lot of data flash, but I pr prefer open log anyway. And it's got the onboard v voltage regulator. I'm not sure whether the onboard voltage regulator carries much weight either because I think basically everybody out there who's building a copter is probably building one with a PDB. You've probably got a PDB and your PDB probably has a voltage regulator on it. So it's nice that there's a voltage regulator on board. I mean, there's some advantages to that. But if you don't have one on board, you're probably not going to be like, gosh, what am I going to do? You know, you're probably just going to have a PDB that has one on board. You're not even going to notice. So I feel like that's kind of neutral. Okay. So that's number one, X-Racer F303. Number two, the Dodo. And then number three is actually, amazingly, I'm just not that compelled by the SP Racing F3 at, at that price. And with the, with the fact, and I'm also not a super huge fan of the layout and the micro JST connectors. If you like the micro JST connectors and don't mind the fact that there's a mixture of through hole micro JST, if you like that, then I could see somebody putting the SP Racing F3 above the Dodo, especially if you were going to buy a clone and you weren't going to pay 65 bucks for it. I think it would be much more competitive against the X-Racer F303 if you weren't bothered by the layout, okay? Um, but still, it has less, less flash memory. Uh, and then for me, the number three on the spot 
I actually give number three to the Nays 32 Rev 5. And I know that is really uh, probably surprising to some people. But listen, if I was going to spend 27 bucks on a board, I would buy the X Racer F303, right? I probably wouldn't buy an F1 board for 27 bucks. Maybe, I mean, it can still run one kilohertz gyro stink, right? And so maybe, maybe, but probably not. And so then that at that point I'm like, well, I could spend 22 bucks. I could spend a little bit extra for the for the different layout of the Dragonfly 32, or I could just spend you know 17 to 20 bucks and buy a Nase 32 Rev 5. I've used them forever. They're solid. They work. They do what I need them to do. Um, and and you know they're, they're cheap. So that's that's how it falls out to me. Number one, X Racer F303. And if they put a VBAT pin on that thing, number one by a mile. Okay, it's the only thing holding me back. Number two. The Dodo, although at 50 bucks it'll hurt a little bit, but you know, I, I would do it. And then probably the Nace 32 Rev 5. Okay, that's my, that's how I prioritize it. Hope that information is helpful. Uh, tell me what you think. Tell me where your priorities are down in the comments. Bye bye.